All right, it's time for our next talk. Uh, Dotan will tell us about what's new in open telemetry. So welcome, Dotan. Thank you very much. Hey, everyone. Uh, glad to be here and uh, see everyone here at uh, Cloud Native Reject and in general uh, a great way to start uh, the KubeCon uh, week. And today I'd like to talk to you about what's new in open telemetry. But just out of curiosity and to get to know you, how many uh, of you are familiar with open telemetry project? With a show of hands. Amazing. Leave your hands up. Uh, how many of you uh, know uh, what it's about, the main component, specification, uh, uh, protocols? Very cool. Very cool. That, that's a great improvement from last year when I was at KubeCon on stage talking about open telemetry, much less uh, uh, familiarity, so great to see that. Um, and a word about myself, my name is Dotan Horvitz, I'm the principal developer advocate at logs.io. Logs.io provides a cloud native observability platform uh, that's built on popular open source tools such as Jaeger, Prometheus, uh, OpenSearch, and obviously also OpenTelemetry. Uh, I'm an advocate of open source and communities. I'm a CNCF ambassador. I uh, co-organize the local uh, CNCF chapter uh, in Tel Aviv. If you come around, do join our meetup. Um, KC, Kubernetes Community Days, DevOps Days, and many more. And I invite you to uh, check out my podcast, uh, Open Observability Talks, about open source DevOps observability. If that's your thing, check it out. And let's talk about uh, why, just briefly about why uh, we need open telemetry to lead uh, uh, to, the, to the roadmap. And obviously, the story starts with observability. Uh, we all know observability as the uh, ability to understand the state of our system based on the uh, telemetry, based on the signals that it emits. And uh, typically, people talk about logs, metrics, and traces, although these are not the only signals, as we'll uh, soon see. Uh, so across different signals, but also across different sources. So think about your uh, front-end uh, application, back-end code. Think about infrastructure components, I don't know, your Kubernetes, your uh, Docker, your uh, uh, Kafka, Redis, whatnot. Uh, essentially, uh, even cloud services, and then fusing them all together uh, to gain insight into what your system uh, uh, is doing. That's the essence, that's the vision. But the reality is, unfortunately, much more fragmented. And the reason is that um, most of us use many tools for observability. Um, if we look at the recent uh, surveys, people reported the organizations use between five to 10 different tools. On average, some more than 10. Uh, and the problem is that each vendor and each tool has its own API and SDK for instrumenting the application. And then uh, and think about your, your Datadog uh, SDKs and your Splunk and your uh, whatnot. And then uh, it all, its own agent, daemon, collector, each one with its own name for collecting, aggregating, doing some sorts of processing manipulations. Then its own data model and, uh, and the protocol to transmit it to its uh, backend. Uh, and all of that creates, uh, first of all, a headache operationally, uh, running so many tools, but also creates vendor lock-in. It creates tight coupling between the collection side, the telemetry collection, and the uh, storage and uh, analytics backend, so you don't get to choose what's right for you. And most importantly, going back to the uh, observability, unified observability, it creates data silos which makes it very difficult to ask and answer questions across your system that cross uh, these data silos. And this is exactly what open telemetry comes to solve. So uh, open telemetry in a nutshell uh, is uh, an observability framework for uh, generating and capturing uh, telemetry data across uh, logs, metrics, and traces. So essentially, uh, one framework to rule them all, if you like. Uh, on the collection side of things, it doesn't have any stake in the backend analytics uh, side of things, so just generating and collecting. Um, 
It's an incubating project under the CNCF. In fact, it started off as a merge of open tracing and open sensor. So if there is anyone who's familiar and still using, time to move to open telemetry that deprecated. Um, it's, it joined the CNCF sandbox back in 2019, then uh, to the CNCF incubation back in 2021. So it's been around for uh, quite a good few years. And now that we have the baseline of, okay, we understand uh, what's open telemetry, let's start the what's new with uh, what's new with the project uh, adoption and activity? And actually, there's a fascinating report that is supposed to be published this week. At least that's what the uh, CNCF's uh, CTO promised me, uh, Chris uh, Anacek, um, that talked, talks about the project journey for open telemetry from uh, since it joined uh, back in 19 uh, and until today. And I'm going to show you some nuggets of, of that. I think the most, the most impressive thing that I saw out of this report was that this is today the second most active project in the CNCF. And you know how many projects there are in the CNCF, right? And it doesn't fit the screen. But that's the second most active, the first being Kubernetes itself. So you see this little circle here, the, the blue circle is Kubernetes, and that one is open telemetry. I don't know if you see my uh, laser point, but never mind. The red one is open telemetry, very impressive. And indeed, uh, for those who uh, uh, did something with open telemetry, you probably saw that. It's been adopted by all, <coughs> all the major vendors. Um, uh, adopting it to their own uh, uh, to their own offering, and also uh, getting involved in the project itself, uh, which leads me to another very interesting thing out of the uh, the survey. Uh, you can see here the company's co uh, contribution uh, to the project, and you can see here all the major players. You see all the cloud uh, vendors, uh, obviously Microsoft, uh, Amazon, Google, and others. You see all the monitoring and observability uh, players, uh, the big ones, Splunk, Datadog, uh, Dynatrace, New Relic, whatnot, um, and many others, even end users. So you see all of them definitely active, and in general, this is an immensely active project. So very, very encouraging. If we want this to become a de facto standard in the industry, that's a good indicator for that to, uh, to become a, a standard. And another interesting thing outside of the report that I mentioned, the CNCF's report is actually this one. This is uh, sh this to show that analysts starting putting it on their radar. And this is from uh, last year's Gartner uh, uh, report, the hype cycle for emerging technologies. And you can see here uh, open telemetry on the, with the arrow on the uh, innovation trigger. And more interesting, you can see that Gartner foresees that this uh, will reach the plateau of productivity, that area, within two to five years, which just shows you how fast Gartner believes that this project is moving forward. Uh, so that, that's very impressive. And I know that many of us here are engineers. What do we care about uh, analysts? What, do we, what do they're saying? But I, I have to tell you that in order to get buy-in within large organizations, enterprises, and so on, for new technology, not the IBMs of the world, you need to show something written from analyst reports to show that this, uh, this is backed uh, by, by something written by the authorities. So I hope that this will help push uh, uh, Otel also into uh, uh, enterprises and large organizations. So really, uh, lots of good stuff. As I said, the report is uh, coming, uh, coming out soon, uh, hopefully this week. And until then, if you want, you're all invited to check out my latest uh, episode with uh, CNCF's CTO uh, on open observability talks. He gave uh, off quite a bit of interesting bits about, uh, about uh, open telemetry as well as others. So all invited to check it. And now, uh, before, sorry, before I move to the... Uh, to the technical updates, I want to just uh, uh, level set the, the knowledge of the main components so that I can refer to them in the updates. I'll do that briefly because I see that most of you are familiar. But essentially, open telemetry uh, in a nutshell is what you see here. It's, um, it provides a unified set of APIs, SDKs, and tools for generating uh, telemetry out of your project. This is the bluish part in, on the uh, left-hand side. And then uh, a unified collector, a way to collect telemetry from application and from infrastructure uh, and process. And uh, this is the green part. And then a standardized way to represent uh, and to, sh to, let's say, transmit it to any backend that you wish. Um, 
So that's OpenTelemetry in a nutshell, and let's uh, quickly go over each one of these pieces because it's important to understand. Um, first, before the components, there is the uh, OpenTelemetry specification that is not a component, but it essentially governs all the, um, uh, uh, it, it provides sort of the specification for the cross language uh, uh, requirements uh, that each and every implementation needs to uh, adhere to. So uh, it includes the API spec, the SDK spec, and the uh, data spec, things such as semantic conventions and so on, uh, for uh, traces, metrics, and logs, so across the signals. Uh, and this comes to solve the pain that we talked about before, the fragmentation problem that each tool and each vendor and each programming language has its own way of doing things uh, non-consolidated. And another thing that it comes to solve, once you have everything under one data model, it's very easy to correlate, okay? So this is uh, not a component, but it's uh, very, very important to be familiar with that. Then there are the client libraries. Uh, the client libraries, uh, essentially OpenTelemetry provides you with one API and one SDK per programming language uh, with which you can manually instrument your code. So you add bits into your code like you do with logging, if you remember, just putting a line saying, send this log uh, line into this. So this is the manual instrumentation way of doing things. In addition, uh, the client libraries provide uh, language-specific integrations with uh, popular web frameworks, RPC uh, um, uh, libraries, uh, storage clients, and so on. Uh, so they can instrument these libraries that you use within your uh, programs. And also, some languages offer auto-instrumentation agents that can automatically instrument your code to a certain degree without you having to modify the code. So uh, that's in essence, and as you can see, uh, OpenTelemetry aims to provide the full range from fully manual to fully automatic and, and anything in between, essentially. So that's the, the client libraries, and, uh, and by the way, the automatic instrumentation is not just a nice-to-have way of, of starting uh, to instrument your code with the low barrier. Sometimes it's a must-have. If you use, for example, third-party uh, uh, code or libraries that you can't actually modify the source code, this is a must-have. So uh, auto-instrumentation is a lot of, uh, a lot of emphasis is put on uh, auto-instrumentation, as we'll uh, soon see. Uh, so that was the client libraries. The next uh, component is the OpenTelemetry collector. Uh, and the collector essentially can collect data from uh, the SDKs we talked about before. Uh, uh, it can uh, transmit them to the collector. It can, uh, uh, and, and you can see it's built like a, it's a general purpose uh, protocol, okay? It, it uh, uh, can collect from the SDKs and also from infrastructure. You have Kafka, you have Redis, you have uh, MySQL, whatnot. It can collect it uh, in a uniform manner, and it's, um, uh, it can, uh, it's built like a data processing pipeline, essentially. So you have multiple receivers in multiple protocols, multiple processors, and then uh, exporters in multiple protocols. So if your application emits distributed traces in a Jaeger format, you just plug in a Jaeger rece uh, receiver. If you're a, you have a Kafka, you plug in a Kafka receiver. You have a, a, a Redis or whatnot, Prometheus receiver, and so on. Then you have processors to do all sorts of processing, uh, uh, filtering, batching, sampling, anything you'd like. Of course, you can also chain different processors to get more elaborate logic. That's the processors. And then, depending on your backend, you will plug in the right exporter. So you have exporters to... Um, uh, cloud uh, services like uh, AWS uh, X-Ray, Azure Monitor, Google, obviously the traditional monitoring tools, uh, uh, Splunk, Sumo Logic, Logs.io, you have uh, open source, of course, uh, Prometheus, Jaeger, Zipkin, and many others. Just plug in the right, uh, right exporter and you're done. So that's uh, uh, the collector in a nutshell. And the last component that I would like to talk about is the OpenTelemetry protocol, or OTLP which is a general purpose uh, telemetry data delivery protocol. Uh, you can use it to send, uh, uh, to send data, the telemetry between the SDKs and the collector. You can use it between the collector and your backend uh, analytics tool or any other intermediary nodes. It's really general purpose, client server, request response uh, protocol. Uh, as you can see, it, uses, uh, either it supports either gRPC or HTTP 1.1 on the uh, transport layer. So you have OTLP over gRPC or OTLP over uh, HTTP. 
Uh, it supports binary uh, uh, protobuf encoding or JSON uh, protobuf encoding for the, for the encoding side. And obviously, the encoding is done based on the data model in the specification. So we use the same semantic conventions, the same, uh, uh, the same data model that we uh, defined in the specification. Um, one note that's important to say, using open telemetry, you're not mandated to use OTLP. We saw before, I showed you before, that the collector supports multiple protocols on the uh, receivers, multiple uh, protocols on the exporters. Also, the SDK, by the way, knows to export in multiple protocols. So you're not forced to use that, but open telemetry, uh, as, as a mission statement, wants to provide a, a, a holistic framework that includes the protocol and to enable the correlation. And in general, that's the philosophy of open telemetry as a project. It's a, it's a, you can use the SDK without a collector. You can use the collector without the SDK. Uh, so it's a loosely coupled project, yet a holistic framework for generating collecting and communicating the uh, telemetry. So that's uh, really much in a nutshell, the, the main, at least the main, um, the main components. And now I would like to uh, talk about the, uh, let's see, yeah, Let, let's, now that you understand the components, let's talk about some updates and uh, let's start with the main signals, the logs, the metrics, the traces, uh, and understand where each signal stands. Um, and the most mature signal of all is traces uh, that is already generally available or stable in the uh, CNCF terminology, which means that the API, the SDK, the protocol, uh, the collector are all uh, stable. Uh, there are many client libraries that are stable, that version 1.0 or above. You see the languages here, Java, Go, .NET, Python, and, and more and more. Uh, and the most important thing for you uh, is that Stable means that it comes with guarantees for long-term support, backwards compatibility, dependency isolation guarantees that are the things that you'd be looking for if you want to run this in production environments. So that's traces. Next up is metrics that is uh, in a release candidate. Uh, it's been announced at uh, KubeCon last year. Um, and so it's... Uh, it's expected to be uh, generally available very soon, so stay tuned. Uh, and it means that the API, the SDK, the protocol are already stable. Uh, there are client libraries uh, already stable in multiple languages. You can see here Java, .NET, Python, JavaScript, uh, C++. The collector supports uh, metric pipelines. And very important, we all know that uh, Prometheus is the standard way of uh, exposing, uh, uh, exposing metrics, essentially, uh, op open metrics uh, for those who are familiar. So it supports uh, fully the, uh, uh, in collaboration, by the way, between the groups, between the Prometheus uh, community and the open telemetry, they reached a very nice collaboration. So the SDK of open telemetry can export uh, a Prometheus format. The collector has receivers and exporters in Prometheus format. There is a, a Prometheus to OTLP data model uh, specification alignment. So we're there. Uh, the least advanced is logs that is still experimental. Uh, although some pieces are already stable, like the protocol. And logs, because logs is the most well-established, uh, uh, let's say, telemetry. Everyone has logs from everywhere and from third parties and libraries and tools, and we can't really decide that we're reinventing the wheel. So the first phase and the first focus was to uh, integrate with existing logging systems, logging frameworks. So that was the first focus of the, of, uh, the open telemetry project, uh, meaning that you can, for example, fetch logs and transmit them over OTLP protocol. Uh, you have log appenders uh, under development that allow essentially to append trace data uh, like trace ID, span ID, uh, appended to existing logs. Uh, so this is the first focus. The second focus is uh, to actually create the longer term, is to actually create a new uh, strongly typed and machine readable logging format. And that's very important because for true observability, these flat files, unstructured, 
is not really, uh, doesn't lend itself for observability. So this is what uh, uh, the project aims to do in the long run, and this is uh, already uh, in the making. As I mentioned, the uh, protocol is already stable, which means that the data model is there, the OTLP already uh, incorporates the log piece into it uh, in, in a stable fashion, and this is something that is going to be very interesting. If you are interested in logs, I would get involved in this uh, uh, discussion. Very, very interesting. So these are the main signals, and now let's talk about what else is new beyond, uh, beyond the main signals. And first up is going beyond logs, metrics, and traces, uh, and going into, venturing into new signals. And the first signal that the community identified is continuous profiling. Uh, continuous profiling, just so you know, traditional profiling, getting the uh, CPU, memory, disk usage, but on a continuous fashion, so that you can identify trends, and then you can uh, segment and break down by instance, by uh, version, by, uh, by function, and, and so on and so forth. This is the, the next, and there's already a, a very active working group looking into uh, incorporating that. Uh, next up is, uh, sorry, is the wrong button, is real user monitoring support. So up till now, the main focus was around uh, server-side telemetry. And uh, obviously, you could do client-side instrumentation. You could take the JavaScript uh, SDK and, and instrument your, your client-side code. But we didn't really have representation of entities that are client-side by nature, like a session ID and things like that. And the typical questions that you would ask uh, around real user monitoring, uh, such as uh, how many new users versus number of returning users, uh, um, identifying pages that generate high number of errors, uh, counting conversions from home page to purchase, all these sorts of questions require entities in the, in, the, in the schema, in the model, that are not there uh, at present. So, so there is this work around the client-side uh, uh, client telemetry, very interesting uh, to look into. Uh, next up, and uh, glad to be after the previous talk talking about eBPF, because now you're all experts in eBPF. So eBPF, you understood, is a program that we can inject essentially to run in the kernel space, in, in a, a kernel level. And in the context of observability, that opens up a whole uh, a realm of opportunity to instrument, to do auto-instrumentation without having to modify the code in the code level, in the programming uh, uh, language level. Um, and the, the first success story for that is the Go language, Golang. Uh, for those who know, how many know Go? Okay, we have a bit half, a bit less than half. So Go, for those who don't know Go, is a very, very problematic language in terms of injecting. It doesn't have any hooks or, or ways to inject. Well, essentially, the program in Go just packages everything in it. Uh, it comes bundled, but then if you want to, for example, introduce a, an auto-instrumentation agent, it's not uh, trivial at all. So, for example, having the eBPF as an option to do that, one uh, floor underneath, let's put it uh, this way, that was a great success, and there's a SIG, special interest groups for uh, Golang uh, auto-instrumentation that makes use of that, and, this, uh, and more languages are looking into that. So eBPF auto-instrumentation, very interesting. Uh, next up is uh, ease of operation. So as more and more organizations get to use that in production, we need to think about day two, we need to think about how we manage that, and obviously we have already, for those who don't know, OpenTelemetry already has an operator, a Kubernetes operator, or hotel uh, operator, but this is just the deployment side. Next up is to get uh, remote agent management. So we want to be able to uh, update configuration of the agent. We, we want to be able to monitor the agent and see where they stand, what's the status, all of these are uh, elements that are part of the uh, remote agent management. And the most important um, uh, activity around that is what is known as OPAMP, uh, which is Open Agent Management Protocol. I wrote it down to, so I uh, make sure that I remember what the initials are about. Uh, and a lot of active work around that. Uh, it's already uh, uh, the specification that the protobuf scheme are already available, version uh, 0.7.0, implementation already in Go, in Golang, uh, there's a, the hotel operator already supports uh, OPAMP, so a lot of activity around that. So if you are looking for ways to deploy in production at scale, uh, uh, this is a very interesting uh, initiative. Next up is uh, OpenTelemetry demo that has reached uh, GA. 
So now you have a full-fledged demo of a distributed system uh, that is 100% instrumented with open telemetry for uh, traces and for metrics. Very interesting and a very good way to start engaging with the project via this demo. Uh, so lots of more updates. I won't get into that. But essentially, if you want to read more about that, you can check out my post uh, on the CNCF blog uh, that summarizes these and gives more information also where to follow up, what's the working group uh, relevant working group, Slack channels, and so, and so on. Um, and uh, I also uh, invite you to join now uh, uh, during KubeCon Thursday. There is going to be the uh, project update talk, uh, so check it out. And also, uh, day after tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, I think it's around 4 p.m., we're going to have the maintainer uh, meeting where you can actually join. You can uh, discuss the roadmap, uh, talk about how you use uh, OpenTelemetry, what you need out of the project, and so on. So definitely, um, definitely uh, interesting. So Tuesday for the meeting and Thursday for the project update uh, talk. Highly recommended. And... Uh, the last point that I want to say is how to get started with open telemetry. And I know it can be confusing. I keep hearing that from everyone. Uh, even in this talk, we heard so many things. We talked about different signals, metrics, logs, traces, continuous profiling. We talked about different components, the collector and its receivers and exporters and Java and .NET and API and SDK. And OK, so I need to instrument. I need to start with my own organization, my own system. How do I get started? And I would like to offer my bit of advice, and it starts with something very basic, uh, which is know your stack. Answer these basic questions to understand your system and what you need. So first of all, obviously, which programming languages uh, your uh, application is implemented in, especially if you're a polyglot organization. Uh, and uh, preferably also which uh, frameworks and platforms you use within it. So uh, we use Java with Spring. We use Node.js with uh, Express. So uh, sorry, sorry, apologies. Um, uh, so understand these frameworks as well, because that will help you determine the uh, client libraries uh, that you will need to use and what kinds of maybe uh, framework support and auto instrumentation capabilities that you will need for your application. Next up, which signals? What are you going to collect? Logs, metrics, traces, uh, and also in which protocols, which is especially important if it's a brownfield project and you have some sort of a, I know, you have a Kafka communicating in a specific protocol that you need to adhere to. You have a, an older uh, piece of code that uh, uses uh, Zipkin for the tracing or, or whatnot. You need to identify because this will help you determine the receivers that you will need uh, to use in your uh, hotel collector. And lastly, which analytics backend you're going to use. It doesn't have to be one, it could be multiple, but you need to understand because this will help you uh, determine the exporters. So if you use Jaeger for your tracing, then Jaeger exporter. You need uh, uh, Prometheus for metrics, Prometheus uh, remote write exporter, and so on. So these are the questions, and once you have that mapped out, uh, then go and check out the status of each. There's a very useful page in opentelemetry.io slash status that gives a high-level status uh, of each. Uh, that's a good place to start. Next up, sorry, next up we have... Um, next up, we have the uh, uh, docs, very useful, and the registry, which is essentially a search engine across the massive GitHub repo. So you want to search, I don't know, .NET uh, instrumentation, just type in .NET. It will take you already to the, to the relevant part of the repo. Uh, and I would like to invite you all to check out also the guide that I created for Open Telemetry. Um, uh, that it gives a good uh, hello world uh, overview of all the components, all the protocols, or all the uh, things that we talked about in great depth. Also, as a sub guide per programming language, so we have the Java sub guide, uh, .NET, Go, uh, uh, Python, and uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and from there, carries on to the relevant links within the Open Telemetry docs. So it's a good starting point. Check it out. And. If you have any questions, if you have any uh, feedback about this guide or anything else, do feel free to reach out to me uh, at Horowitz, Twitter, Mastodon, uh, LinkedIn, whatnot. Uh, and I remind you, this is an open source project, so get involved, get your hands dirty, and also uh, uh, get into the discussion. As I mentioned, even this week, if you don't know where to start, this week is a great uh, opportunity. Tuesday, meeting the maintainers and mapping out the different working groups and uh, uh, tags, technical advisory groups, and so on. Um, and uh, 
looking forward to seeing you and um, together making this uh, the best uh, project for all of us. I'm Dotan Horvitz. Thank you very much for listening. And if there are any questions, then uh, happy to uh, take a few. Wow, I did a, good, a really good job. If everyone understood everything that I, did, I said, that's a, that's a good status. Last call, going once, going twice. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.